Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The saying is trustworthy. If anyone aspires to the office of overseer, he desires a noble task. An overseer, a pastor, is divinely called by God through the church to care for the congregation. Pastor is to be a shepherd of the sheep while recognizing at the same time that he is also an under shepherd of the good shepherd Jesus Christ. A pastor is also called to be a sheep baptized into the family of God. And so as you think through your life for just a second, what do you remember about your pastor? What impact did they have on your life of faith? What sort of memories stick out from your childhood or from your adulthood? And how have your pastors helped you remain close to your relationship with Jesus? I've had several pastors have an impact on my personal walk of faith. My pastor growing up graciously took me under his wings for a week-long interim as I was determining whether or not I was going to go into the holy ministry. A whole week of job shadowing my pastor. My mentor has Skyped with me almost every single month for over 13 years now. Right? He serves as pastor, professor, psychologist, and a whole lot of, a bunch of hosts of hats. Pastor Lucas answered so many questions of mine and so many concerns were addressed of mine, I simply could not count them all. I'm sure he got very tired of me knocking on his door, and I am thankful. And numerous other pastors have also helped mold and shape me to where I am now in my life. So how about you? What do you remember about your pastors? And what impact did they have on your life of faith? And how did they help you remain close Jesus. You see, today's text has to do with the office of the Holy Ministry. The text says, the saying is trustworthy. If anyone aspires to the office of overseer, he desires a noble task. St. Paul lets us know that it's a good thing when a man desires to be a pastor. It's a good thing when a man wants to be an under-shepherd of a good shepherd's flock. It's a good thing. But it's not an easy thing. The text, as you heard it read here earlier, lists an entire gamut of pastoral qualifications. Therefore, an overseer must be above reproach, the husband of one wife, sober-minded, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not a drunkard, not violent, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not a lover of money. He must manage his own household well with all dignity, keeping his children submissive, for if someone does not know how to manage his own household, how will he care for God's church? He must not be a recent convert, or he might become puffed up with conceit and fall into the condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must be well thought of by outsiders, so that he may not fall into disgrace, into a snare of the devil. Such qualifications for the office of the Holy Ministry reveal God's desire, His great desire to care for His church. He makes it very clear that a pastor is to lead by example with a holy life because actions do speak louder than words. And in no way does he want his name to be blasphemed by the very office that he has put in place to proclaim his holy name to his people. But make no mistake about it. No pastor gets those qualifications down perfectly all the time. Pastors are sinners too. You may wonder why a pastor wears the goofy shirt that they wear. All right? The shirt is black for a reason. Because I am a sinner. And it also reminds parishioners that they too are sinners. And that we all stand as sinners before God. We are all sinners in need of a Savior. St. Paul said it more clearly two chapters before our text for today. He said this, The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. I am a sinner. All you have to do is ask Emily or ask my kids, and they will tell you, I am a sinner. And you 
you are also sinners. And we are all sinners doomed to death because the wages of sin is death. But conveying this sinful depravity to people is one of the hardest things about serving as a pastor. It's not easy to say to someone that they are living in sin separating themselves from God, that they're putting themselves at risk of death and condemnation in hell if they don't repent. But it's true nonetheless. It's true for you, and it's true for me. Now, it could be so easy to stand up here and just tell nice stories with warm, fuzzy thoughts that make us feel good about ourselves when we go out those doors. But that's not what a pastor is called to do. Pastor is called to direct people to Jesus. And the only way that we will see our need for Jesus is if we see first that we are sinners. That means that if your pastor stands in front of you or meets with you one-on-one -on -one and shows you your sin and calls you to repentance, it's not because he has something against you, but rather it's because he's doing what he has been called by the church to do. It's because he's been called by God through the congregation to care for the church. To be the under-shepherd means to lead the flock in following the good shepherd. And that will always start with a life of repentance. Now, not a one of us here, myself included, likes to come to terms with our own sinfulness. It's hard. It's painful. It takes admitting that we are wrong. How many of you like to admit we are wrong? I see no takers. It takes changing our sinful ways. How many Lutherans does it take to change a light bulb? Change? Let's change. It takes repenting over and over, being forgiven over and over. And so it's no wonder that Timothy was told by Paul to fight the good fight of the faith. It's a battle. But it's a battle we're fighting. It's a battle that Jesus fought for you and I and he won on the cross of Calvary and through the empty tomb. I love how Paul writes it in 1 Corinthians. He writes, Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Because through his blood-stained cross and through his empty tomb, Jesus won the victory for us. And there is no greater joy than a pastor has in pronouncing that victory over sin, death, and the devil. Again, back to that shirt. It's why the pastor wears a white hat over the voice box. He is called upon to speak the word of God, to faithfully administer the sacraments, and to pronounce Christ's forgiveness upon you. Personally speaking, there is no greater joy than sharing the great news of great joy with you. As I think back on 12 years of ministry, I have so many fond memories of just that, the good news of great joy. And a couple of different things stuck in my mind as I was writing this sermon. I can remember this one instance where I was visiting someone. It just happened to be, I didn't know it at the time, that it was going to be right before their death. And I was leading them through confession and absolution right before I would commune them there in their home. And I asked them if they had anything specific that they would like to confess. And they said they did. And as soon as they confessed it, and they heard that they were forgiven in Christ, they said that it was like a weight of many years had been lifted, thanks to Jesus. Another thing I can remember was the time I was visiting another person right before they died. Asked them if they would like to receive the Lord's Supper. And they said they did. It was only a couple of hours later that they died. But I couldn't help but shed tears of joy as I thought about that the last meal that they had here on this earth was the foretaste of the feast to come right before they dined with Jesus in heaven. 
Yes, the office of the holy ministry is indeed a noble task. It is an honor and a privilege, to be sure. It's a good thing that God gives his church with pastors so that congregations can receive that word and sacrament. And I say that not just because I am a pastor, but also because of all the pastors that have served me with God's gifts as well. I think one of the best lines I've heard in my ministry is, is that pastors need pastors to But the church needs more men to serve in this office. The church is facing a significant pastoral shortage. Consider this for just a moment. When I graduated from seminary in 2007, there were 144 graduates in my class in St. Louis, which means between the two seminaries, there were over 200 graduates that went out into the field to serve as pastors. Here in 2019, there were approximately 90 graduates from both seminaries combined. This is why it's essential that we encourage young men to consider the office of the Holy Ministry. That even though it may be hard, it is a noble task. It's a good thing. And we will need good pastors to serve us in the future generations. As St. Paul wrote to the Romans, how then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. I began this sermon by asking, what do you remember about your pastors? What impact did they have on you in your life, in childhood or adulthood? And how have they helped you remain close to Jesus throughout your life? And the reason that I ask those questions is because of the position that Zion now finds itself in. We are calling an associate pastor. What kind of a man are we looking to serve in that office? No doubt we desire that man to fulfill those qualifications set forth by Timothy or for Timothy by Paul. That's a given. But beyond that, let us keep before us the noble task that we are asking him to do to serve us. We are asking this man to faithfully serve us God's word and his sacrament. And to lead us in a life of repentance and forgiveness over and again. For that is what will truly help us remain close to Jesus. And that is what the care of God's church is truly all about. Connecting us to Jesus, who fulfilled all the qualifications by living a perfect life and did the noble task of dying and rising for us so that our sins may be forgiven and that life and salvation may be ours. Let us pray. O oh, gracious Father, you led your holy apostles who ordained ministers to the proclamation of your word and the faithful administration of the sacraments of Christ. Grant to this congregation the guidance of the Holy Spirit to choose a suitable pastor according to your will for the blessing of your church in this place. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, and all God's people said, Amen. And the peace of God who surpasses all in your understanding, guard and keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We rise to sing the offer.